I've resumed the recording. Now we're okay. Um, and so, because we have guests this morning, we will honor America with the Star Spangled Banner. Canada. With TELUS, you become part of something bigger. Using technology for So welcome to the Creston Valley Rotary Club this morning. This morning, I just have one more welcome, an official welcome. Let me just share the screen. You'll note on the screen, the Rotary plaque. This was our president in 2007 and 2008. He's an honorary member. and I'd like to welcome your fellow Rotarians from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Have a great session. So you've been officially greeted by our mayor. Ron is an honorary member of our club and when he's finished with politics, which um, I, there's a rumor it might be soon, we will welcome him back. So our, our guest this morning, Andy Bacham, as president of the Rotary Club of La Crosse. Uh, Andy, would you like to say a few words? And I don't want you to introduce everyone, but maybe just give a sense of uh, what it's like to be with us in the Creston Valley. Yeah, thank you, President Dave. I know we've got um, 
a few members here that have joined us. Uh, it's actually a little after nine here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. So a lot of our members are busy at work today. Um, but it is just an honor to be with you guys. Uh, pretty neat story here uh, that Dave and I share. Uh, it, it's, it's just exciting to me to be here and to be able to share this story. And uh, President Dave sent me my own Creston Valley polo, but also my Creston Valley hat. And um, I'm wearing the hat quite regularly on weekends. And it, it's neat to go out and have people ask, what is up with the Creston Valley Rotary Club hat that you're wearing? So it's a fun story to tell. And I'm really, really happy to be here and to tell you guys a little bit more about our club here in La Crosse. And just a quick uh, greeting from our district, District 5080, as uh, those joining us, we are an international district. Um, Dave, um, David Walter, David, have you got a couple words of greetings from our district? I just want to welcome the uh, La Crosse Rotary Club and uh, the, the last time I was in La Crosse, I could hardly park at the hotel because of the Harley Davidson Millennium gathering in Minneapolis. And we had 10,000 motorcycles all the way to South Dakota. So welcome La Crosse. Thank you, David. We look forward to time when we can spend some time together. Um, continue to keep people muted. You know, I just, I, I do have to say condolences to all of you Badger fans, I think you got a rotten draw in March Madness, but I think that the, the young freshman, Jonathan Davis from La Crosse Central did you proud and uh, will represent the University of Wisconsin and uh, your city and your high school very well in the future. Um, at this time, we usually recite the four-way test. Sometimes that's a bit of a zoo on Zoom. And so occasionally we will just listen to it and uh, because of our early morning meeting, uh, we do it this way. This is from the Rotary Club of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? Will it build good? Will it better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concern? When we pay it forward, it will be returned. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? Will it build good? Will it better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concern? Anyway, the only downside to playing that song is later in the day you're going to be singing, is it the truth? And uh, uh, it's one way that we stay awake in the morning. Uh, one of the things that I have put on the agenda as a um, uh, president right from the very beginning is we have always had a rotary moment. And this is how I found five questions with Andy. I looking on, just got tired of trying to find out some facts or rotary facts. And um, that's how we got to know the, the lacrosse uh, Rotary Club. But I have tried to do that on our own. So our Rotary moment this morning is five questions with our president elect. Good morning, this is President Dave and I have five questions for our president-elect, Rick Minichello. Rick, uh, you're a chartered accountant and I uh, understand you went to a conference once and got some real good advice that you're gonna share with us. Yes, 
Thanks, Dave. Um, yes, it was a um, conference that a uh, tax lawyer put on for us, and uh, his uh, advice was uh, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered, and so if you're a little piggish, you'll probably do all right, but if you're uh, a hog, you're going to run into trouble. Good advice. Uh, secondly, as most Canadian kids, you grew up playing hockey, Rick. What was the highest level you reached? Uh, I reached um, uh, university hockey varsity with the University of British Columbia. Uh, we uh, were uh, second in the um, Western Canada the first year that I played with them. And Rick, in, in Rotary, I understand that you have uh, a connection with the student exchange program. It's very unique. Tell us about it. Yes, we uh, we sponsored a um, uh, a gal that uh, came and lived with us. She uh, had um, uh, two times with us, and um, she ended up uh, my my oldest son fell in love with her, and they ended up getting married. Uh, she's from Australia, and they uh, have recently come back to Canada and are living in Kimberley. Uh, and are looking at uh, returning in a couple of years. And she brought back some grandchildren for you too? Uh, yes, we've got two beautiful daughters, granddaughters, and uh, it's lovely to have them near us. Now, Rick, in, in your years in Rotary, is there any one moment that stands out to you? Uh, yes, uh, uh, we were involved with the uh, Millennium Project and uh, my Two oldest boys and I uh, worked on that project. We uh, went to a local uh, mountain slide where we collected rocks uh, for the fountain in the project. And it was just a pleasure to be able to work and serve the community and work with my kids. And over the years, what does Rotary mean to you, Rick? Rotary means uh, serving the community and being in uh, what I enjoy the most, I think, is working on projects, getting with uh, other Rotarians and other people in the community and uh, making the community a better spot. And in this community, what are the projects that stand out to you as your uh, highlights? I think the, um, the Millennium Park and um, the Centennial Park projects where we put up the pavilion, working up on the, uh, the roof was, uh, was fun and uh, and it's just a great spot for the community to, um, to, to be in. Thank you. This has been Five Questions with our President-elect, Rick Milichello, and he'll be doing this next year. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Dave. This is President Dave, and I have five questions for our President-elect, Rick Milichello. Rick, uh, you're I don't know how to end that now. And, uh, I understand you went to a conference once and got some real good advice that you're going to share with us. Thanks, Dave. Um, yes, it was a uh, conference that he uh, me. put on for us. And uh, his uh, advice was uh, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. And so if you're a little piggish, you'll probably do all right. But if you're uh, a hog, you're going to run into trouble. How do I advice, stop that? Uh, secondly, as most Canadian kids, you grew up playing hockey, Rick. What was the highest level you there we go. You know, this is when I want Rob. I watched Andy when I went to your meeting and, and he just said, hey, Rob, could you run that slide uh, or run that thing? And uh, I'm Dave and I'm also Rob and, and uh, we're still learning Zoom. Thank you for your patience this morning. And uh, for Rick, you know, Andy, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm learning. First two times I tried the five questions. Uh, the first time it took 10 minutes. Second time it took nine minutes and 30 seconds and, and I'm getting it down to, to, to around four minutes now, Andy. And I, I, I really value the, the talent that you have and it's been a lot of fun doing this at this end. So thank you for giving us that. Going through our agenda this morning, just a quick little bit of business items. Um, on district business, received an email again last night that the district virtual conference with the title Spring Into Action will take place on April 17th, District 5080. Apparently, everyone on the email list of Rotary got that. So check your email for a Rotary district email and it looks like a great agenda. It's very short too, it's only a morning. So be a good opportunity. In club business, 
Just wanted to make a note that we will be again sponsoring Citizen of the Year at this year's Blossom Festival. Things will be done on a virtual basis and thanks to John Huscroft for initiating that. He may be looking for some assistance, but the Citizens of the Year in the past formed the committee and our Rotary Club does that sponsorship. So watch for that in the news and as an announcement will be made into the Blossom Festival in May. And one other club business item, just an announcement that I made contact with the committee from the Windle Playground Project. We have made a conditional commitment to them to build the uh, community park out in Windle. Their target date is May, and I am looking for a couple of uh, volunteers to coordinate and be the liaison with that committee. We've promised them some money, and we've promised them some uh, Rotarians with tools to help them assemble. So I've asked Casey to look at that. And so I think Casey will be uh, working as that liaison. Um, is there anything else uh, at, on the agenda that I need to add for club business at this point that is urgent before our program? If not, uh, then it's my privilege uh, to introduce Andy Bauckham, president of the Rotary Club of La Crosse, Wisconsin. And we are so looking forward to your presentation, Andy, and uh, welcome to the beautiful Creston Valley. Well, thank you, Dave. Um, I wanted to get started here by recognizing my team that'll be helping me, Sarah Aaron Tobier. She is our president elect here in La Crosse and she will be uh, helping us here with the slideshow and and uh and running everything and mark jalavet is going to be joining me uh we've got a number of slides that we're going to go through here and um he's going to be we're going to be kind of tag teaming and switching off from slide to slide so we'll see exactly how this goes i do want to also make mention uh we do have a, a few past district governors that i saw join us here uh bill hall is with us. He is a past district governor from our club. Um, and Dean Dickinson is a past district governor from our club. And also I see Chuck Hansen join us. He is a past district governor from our club as well. So I wanted to point those guys out. So, all right, with that, we were gonna start with a video. This is just uh, a video here of lacrosse and kind of some of the views and, and beauty of lacrosse. So Sarah, if you could roll. Oh, give me a second, technical difficulties. <laughs> well, we're having our own fun. Well, that's uh, just a little of the beauty here in La Crosse. Now, if we go back to our slideshow, um, the Rotary Club of La Crosse is, uh, was founded in 1919. So we were a centennial club here in 2019. We currently stand at 184 active members and 29 honorary members. And we are operating 
in a virtual environment currently, just like you guys are. So, and we are also a uh, member of District 6250. So if you wanna to go to the next slide. And Andy, I'm gonna take this next slide, but, but I also wanted to introduce myself. Before I do that, Andy, why don't you tell everyone what you do when you're not at a Rotary meeting? Oh yeah, that would probably be, be good. Um, I am a vice president with US Bank in La Crosse here. Uh, I work with our wealth management clients. Um, I'm also a father of two young boys, husband of a wonderful wife, and I've got uh, coaching duties as well as Rotary. So, and I did wanna say with Rick's video too, uh, that was one of the things for me too that really kind of kicked it into gear with Rotary was being able to serve and do projects with my boys and um, there's nothing else like it. It was just amazing. So thank you for sharing that, Rick. Thank you, President Andy. To President Dave and all the Rotarians today, a, a, a warm good morning. My name is Mark Jolivet. A little bit about myself. I'm a retired Evangelical Lutheran Church in America pastor. We are uh, closely, we're a sister group to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and also in close ecumenical relationships with the Anglican Church of Canada. Uh, I'm also a retired Navy chaplain and I served in the Navy for 30 years in the US Navy. Um, I'm wearing the colors and the logo of the University of Wisconsin. Again, we proudly state that we're the Collegiate Women's Hockey Championship. We were in champions. We were in 2019. There was no championship due to COVID in 2020 when we were ranked number one and couldn't fight for the final ranking. And now again, 40 to 45% of the team is from Canada which makes for an interesting um, meeting when the two Olympic teams uh, play in the Winter Olympics. Um, my background is, a, is a, a, to honor Canada. That's the White Pass and Yukon Railroad that I was privileged to ride in in 2019. Uh, my name, Jolivet, is French Canadian. My ancestors came from Orleans, France and settled on Ile uh, d'Orléans, uh, the big island in the St. Lawrence River, five miles east of downtown uh, Montreal. And they were there from the 1660s till they came here. My great, great, great grandfather uh, got a Voyager canoe down in Prairie du Chien and came up 70 miles of the Mississippi to a big island here between Wisconsin and Minnesota an island that holds our airport now, and he became the second white settler on that island. And the first burial is one of his children there. There were also um, Native Americans on that island. And so La Crosse is on the ancestral land of the Winnebago, now known as Ho-Chunk people. Before that, the Woodland people, the makers of the effigy mounds up and down the Mississippi River. Um, that's enough about me. This slide shows where we're at. We often call ourselves the West Coast of Wisconsin, knowing that we have an East Coast on Lake Michigan, a North Coast on Lake Superior. Out of our airport on that island, French island in the middle of the Mississippi, Delta flies us to Minneapolis and, uh, and Detroit, Michigan, and on, and American Airlines flies us to Chicago. Next slide. All right, some of the things you maybe knew about Wisconsin, we have the uh, greatest football team ever there ever was. 13 league championships, Lombardi Trophy, named after our coach, of course, Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre, Bart Starr. I believe that is the end of our program. No, I'm just kidding. Um, as Mark was saying, yeah, the women's hockey just won national title. I know our men's hockey uh, was just announced as the number one seed in their tournament. So yes, unfortunately, our Badgers didn't fare so well in the basketball tournament. But uh, one thing that Mark didn't say, there was a, uh, let's see, Sophie and Grace Shirley on that, uh, that hockey team. And they are both from Saskatoon, which I believe is also the home of the legendary Walt Reader. So uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, the other thing I want to say just for President Dave here is there's lots of good golf here in La Crosse area and also around the state. We have 
the Whistling Straits Golf Club, Black Wolf Run, Aaron Hills here in La Crosse, or not in La Crosse, in Wisconsin. Um, all just great championship courses. So next slide. All around La Crosse, uh, we have a menace. These are the uh, feral uh, dogs that live in our neighborhood. Um, we have a lot of feral dogs all over Wisconsin. No, obviously we're known as the Dairy State. Um, we know that there has been some contention in our uh, trade policies between Canada and the US regarding dairy. We hope that the waters can be smooth and that will work more closely, but we understand the need to protect farmers on both sides. Unfortunately, we're losing dairy farms and dairy farmers farms are getting much larger here in Wisconsin. Uh, but we are also known as a cheese capital and the world cheese championships are always held in Madison, Wisconsin. And there is some of that wonderful cheese. So all those great cows produce some really good cheese, which is good news unless you happen to be lactose intolerant. Next slide. So there are actually two names for our region. Uh, the first is Driftless Region. That means that the, uh, we're one of the few areas in the Midwest of the US that did not have active glaciers. So we are left with the, uh, the environment that's been shaped by wind and water, but not by glaciers. Uh, very hilly, lots of trees. The other name for our region is the Cooley Region, the French word that means to flow. And uh, we use the word coulee to, uh, to refer to the kind of dead end valleys that come off the rivers and especially the Mississippi River. Uh, roads go, um, go back into the coulees and, and go up in elevation until they end. A lot of farms back in the coulees. In the bottom slide, um, we're proud that this area is where contour farming began in our country. Uh, the conservation effort to prevent uh, loss of soil due to water erosion. And uh, that began between here and uh, the fairly Norwegian area southeast of us in the next county, the area where Andy was raised on a dairy farm. Next slide. All right, we are also known as the Seven Rivers region. And part of that is there are seven rivers here that converge into the Mississippi. And I'm not going to name all seven because I don't think I can, um, but it's really just a wonderful place for outdoors activity. Um, you can go out duck hunting in the morning and then fish the river all day and move to the coolies and do some trout fishing and then be in your tree stand at night to, to hunt some whitetails. So really an outdoor paradise here. A lot of uh, outdoor activities, including climbing in the bluffs hiking um, and also river activities as far as boating, canoeing and kayaking. Next slide. So to add two things to what Andy just said, in a 50 mile radius from La Crosse in this driftless area are more uh, class one uh, trout streams than any other place in the United States. It's a great place to trout fish. Uh, this is a picture of our downtown and the area that's the old mooring from the um, from the, the steamers that used to ply the Mississippi. When the water uh, is lower after the spring floods, we're able to get um, a significant number, 12, 13, 14 uh, paddle wheelers that stop here as they go up and down the Mississippi. Some start in St. Louis and head to Minneapolis. Others have come all the way up from New Orleans. Interestingly enough, to get under the bridge in the background, they have to lower their funnels. The funnels are too high. Uh, we're looking forward in the next year or two to be a port for Viking cruises as they add to the river traffic. Later on, you're gonna see slides of the um, rotary lights and that is in this area as well. Next. All right, what makes La Crosse special? Uh, it really does start with the Mississippi River. And this is a view of 
are downtown along the Mississippi River. And as you can see in the background here a little bit, it, it's the bluffs. And the Mississippi River and the bluffs kind of coming together to make a really magical place uh, for us to live. So I'll move to the next slide. My last slide also said that we were named for the Native American uh, game of lacrosse. There's an alternate story, which is that the lacrosse sticks themselves reminded some of the French settlers of the uh, croziers, the cross that bishops would have. Um, this is a beautiful set of bronze statues of children saying goodbye to people on the steamers in downtown La Crosse. Um, this is our Riverside Park. My wife and I were walking our dog yesterday. Uh, a tremendous amount of people gather in this area, not only to view the river or to fish or to look at the ducks, but uh, we have summer concerts in this area and a beautiful new band shell. Next. As I talked about our beautiful bluffs surrounding La Crosse, Grandad Bluff is the biggest one. And it used to be an old stone quarry, but now we have a, a real nice park up on top of the bluff, um, which we'll see in the next slide. So there we are at the observation area on top of Grandad Bluff, the altitude. The, the distance from below where the streets are to the top is about 200 meters. Um, what you see above the flag is the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. I'll speak about that later. There is a track there and you'll hear more about that later as well. This is a view looking west toward the river from the, from the heights. All around this area are bluffs and uh, it's a beautiful area, especially in the fall the hotels are packed when it's not COVID season with people who want to see the fall color. Next. And this is a view from our Riverside Park looking back towards the bluffs downtown again. Um, it shows the wonderful eagle perched on top of a log. Uh, actually, this time of year is a wonderful time to see bald eagles here as they migrate up the Mississippi River and a lot of them do nest here in La Crosse. So the eagle is a very uh, prominent figure in La Crosse as well. Next slide. The University of, La of Wisconsin La Crosse, um, we have a large state university in Madison and then we have a number of universities scattered throughout the state. This is the largest of those uh, universities scattered throughout the state with about 9,500 undergrads and up to 2,000 graduate students. 50% of the students major in the sciences or the health fields. They're especially known nationally for their physics program and they host a Nobel laureate um, assembly every year. The president of UWL is a member of our club. Next. We also have Viterbo University, uh, which is a private university here in La Crosse. Um, it focuses a lot on nursing and business or a couple of its specialty programs. We have the chancellor of Viterbo University also as a member of our club here in La Crosse. And I think a few, probably two or three additional faculty members are also members of our club here in La Crosse. Next one. Our third educational, inst higher educational institution here in La Crosse is Western Technical College, which has uh, about 5,000 students, but they're scattered on campuses in a 11 county area. Um, they have some programs that finish after two years and some are on to liberal arts and to other college education, such as engineering. A number of the uh, big programs, agriculture, technology, medical tech, uh, hospitality field, uh, IT field, and um, uh, marketing would be some of the big programs. The president of Western Tech is also a member of our club. All right. 
Uh, healthcare. Another thing that lacrosse is known for is its healthcare. Uh, we have a couple of very wonderful healthcare programs here in lacrosse, starting with Gunderson Healthcare. Uh, just a beautiful campus here with Gunderson, and um, they do a wonderful job here. Our next one. So we have the two uh, healthcare uh, employers and providers, and um, Mayo Clinic is a is a satellite of the big Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, about sixty five miles away from us. Uh, the CEO of this clinic is a member of our club, Paul Mueller, and um, we are incredibly um, enriched by these two medical facilities. I'm also happy to say that uh, both my sisters and their husbands are also employees of Mayo Clinic. It is a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, a little bit about the industry here in La Crosse. Um, there's lots of industries here in La Crosse, but two that you may know, uh, Train is, works with air conditioning, heating and air conditioning, and is a major employer here in La Crosse. Um, also, we have City Brewery. And City Brewery used to be Heilemans Brewery. And now they have the lacrosse lager. And we are home to the world's largest six pack. Uh, City Brewery used to be um, <coughs> Heilemans. And Heilemans brewed uh, Old Style and Special Export, which were a couple of beers that maybe you knew. Uh, but here in Wisconsin, it's more about the beer and the cheese, not so much the wine and the cheese. So, all right, next one. Although I do love wine and I would say, Andy, that if I come back to British Columbia, we were in Victoria in 2018, Vancouver in 2019. Uh, my wife and I will linger in Okanaga Valley and taste wine. And I understand there's new wineries coming up in the Creston area as well. Be great to visit. Uh, here's a list of eight clubs uh, that are in the area and the presidents meet regularly. La Crescent at the bottom is the name of the community across the river in Minnesota. Onalaska is the suburb on the north side of La Crosse and Holman is just beyond it. All right, Rotary Lights. Now we're into talking about our Rotary Club projects. And the banner project here in La Crosse is Rotary Lights. That is what our Rotary Clubs are probably most known for. Uh, and this has been a project that uh, just finished this last year as it's 26th year here in La Crosse. And it's a club collaborative with all the other clubs here in the area. And we get together and we put on this wonderful light display in downtown La Crosse. And, and here's just a view of the lights at night. And uh, we've got another one here coming up with, there we go. I want to acknowledge Bill Hole, who's, who's listening and in this meeting, he's on the board and been directly involved and gets our club there on the uh, mm -hmm. day after the American Thanksgiving the last Friday in November to open uh, this, usually with a small parade, and then um, a big crowd coming on opening nights. My grandchildren love to come. We love to get hot chocolate and walk through this whole event. A very special memory as we've raised our grandkids. Another uh, thing that we've actually started here, it's uh, gone for two years, has been one of our local uh, Rotarians here, Al Lewis. He does Al's Muskie Challenge. And what he does is he goes up to a lake in northern Minnesota, Lake Vermilion in northern Minnesota, and he goes muskie fishing. And he asks people to contribute uh, funds based on the number of muskie he catches. Uh, this last year, he caught seven muskies, and the first year of his project, he raised a little over $4,000. This last year, he took it to a whole new level and raised almost $47,000, and that money was then contributed back to five wonderful organizations within our community. Next one. 
At the north end of Riverside Park, at the north end of where you saw rotary lights is the International Friendship Garden. Uh, La Crosse has a number of sister cities. I want to start by talking about the first. The first is Dubna, Russia. We looked for friendships as the Soviet Union was disintegrating into the new uh, nation of Russia. Dubna is on the Volga River. It was a center of nuclear physics and a number of the um, uh, nuclear physics uh, engineers were having unemployment. There was an incredible need to uh, assist as the uh, USSR broke apart. I remember um, we moved here in 1990. One of the first projects was to fill what ended up being two uh, of the United States largest uh, military air aircraft, the C-5A. Two of them were filled with boxes of, of personal aid to families in Dubna, Russia. We've had a strong relationship with teachers, musicians, and others, medical people coming back and forth. Although in recent years, uh, due to some international tensions, that exchange has been limited. We also have our sister cities with Luyang, China, with uh, Epinal, France, which is where the international headquarters of train are located, uh, Freiburg, Germany, Ferda, Norway, and I've been involved in that exchange, as has our club, uh, Bantry, Ireland, and the most recent is Kumbo, Cameroon. Each of those seven countries has an area in these gardens with plants that, and statues and the shaping of the land to remind us of that special friendship. You see here in this picture, Dubna at the, at the top and uh, the bottom was Luyang, China. Thank you, next. All right, and our most recent garden was the Cameroon Garden, which Mark talked a little bit about. And this was one that we completed as our 100 year anniversary project. And you see here was our ribbon cutting ceremony for our Cameroon Garden project. Uh, we most recently, uh, just a couple weeks ago, added a, another statue to that garden. And it is just a wonderful place to go visit here in La Crosse. Next. We have interact clubs in a number of the high schools around here, it says seven. And the first weekend in November, they have been packing food to go overseas in a tremendous event that fills a high school gymnasium with, um, with the items to package and with the, uh, the volunteers. There may be a Rotarian uh, from the lacrosse club listening who wants to add, I have never been to this event because that weekend is a, a Wisconsin football game to which I have tickets. And secondly, my wedding anniversary weekend. So I have missed this if any Rotarian wants to piggyback on my words. Yeah, I can throw in on that. I, I've been a big part of Interact uh, for the last five years. Unfortunately, last year we had to cancel it because having that many people in a confined space was not recommended. Um, but it is a wonderful event and we what we do is we do it's a two-part series and this is done with our interact clubs which are our high school clubs here in lacrosse um, and we package food that goes down to nicaragua to a school down there that is called the dump school in nicaragua uh, and then we also do a local food fundraiser here for lacrosse and it brings in um, any, I believe the largest amount we brought in one year was about 37,000 food items here for the, the food pantries and the cross. So our next slide, our major fundraiser here in the cross is our fruit basket fundraiser. And this is an annual fundraiser that we do in December and our club members deliver fruit uh, to 2000 fruit baskets usually a year that we create and we get together and uh, share fellowship as well as putting together the, the fruit baskets. So uh, next slide. If you're checking your watches, I want you to know we're almost done. Um, for our 75th anniversary, we did this beautiful children's park 
a safe park, uh, safe to climb, safe to, if you've got a fall, it's a very soft uh, area. It even has a kind of a children's theater next to it. This is on the north side of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse between the university and a, and a marsh area that has many hiking trails. Uh, this was our 75th anniversary, I believe it was 1994. And I had never laid cement before. I proudly can show my children and grandchildren the portion that I helped build. We continue to renew it every year, although the La Crosse City Parks and Recreation has taken over the management. Beautiful gift to the community. And I've only fallen there a couple times. So it is soft, I can agree with that. Uh, the Brain Game book is a collaboration that our club has done with Gunderson Hospital here in La Crosse and the Mayo Clinic. And it is just a wonderful project that um, helps parents educate their children uh, from the age of zero to 36 months and really helps people develop their children's brains. Uh, so this is something that is a project that we are absolutely willing to share. Um, what we do here in La Crosse is we provide this brain game book to new parents here in La Crosse, uh, free of children charge to new parents and as they grow and develop. So if this is something that you're interested in, we would be more than happy to share it. I do know our members have, have presented this at Rotary International Conventions and it has a number of usage throughout the world. Yeah. I believe we're gonna to head to our last slide. Uh, one of our most recent projects works with Rajya Jan a woman who's become a, kind of a celebrity speaker at, at Rotary International meetings. Rajya is in the top right. Uh, she lives in Massachusetts much of the year, but her home and her heart is in Afghanistan and with education for girls. Uh, Andy was deeply involved with her and asked what can we do to help? And there was a need to transport the girls to school. And so our club has just sent uh, Rajya Jan and her project, a check for over $45,000, which completely purchases the bus. And she is on her way to Afghanistan right now to not only make that bus purchase, but to uh, get it going as they resume classes now in March after the, the difficult winter season. We don't have a slide but our latest club project was to outfit a medical mobile um, clinic. We have a clinic in town that um, works with those who have no insurance, which is more of an, a US problem than it is a Canadian problem, I understand. But in our uh, area, uh, there are certainly underserved and uninsured people who need medical help. And that clinic will now have a, a fully equipped van to head out into neighboring communities uh, to do some uh, medical help. Uh, Dean Dickinson, former uh, district governor, just was able to send a check. Uh, this was an, an area club, the eight clubs that you saw, a project of all eight. And I believe the check just went for about 145,000 US dollars to purchase and equip that, um, that van. I'm at the end of what I have to say, Andy, and I thank all of you. Yes, I thank all of you too. And if we've got time for questions, we're happy to answer questions. Otherwise, um, we're willing to stay here a little bit after our meeting too, if we wanna have some open conversation and questions at that time. So Dave, that's your call. Andy, thank you. Um, I, uh, if we could go back to the full screen of everyone, um, you set the bar very high for us and for our presentation next week. We're looking forward to coming and, and sharing about our community. You're coming this week, Dave. What? Don't show up next week. Come this week. Two days. Actually, you know, it's 50 hours from now. Thank you, Andy. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 did, I did take my notes and, and it said in 50 hours, we are going to be uh, going on a road trip. That's, that's part of my agenda. So thank you. You've set the bar very high for our presentation. Anybody have any questions for Andy or Mark? Uh, Patricia, 
Um, two questions. One, how large is your club? And I didn't notice any women in your club. You're going to have to show up on Thursday. We're going to tell you all about it. All right. How's that for a tease? <laughs> I'll be there. Any other questions for uh, from from our club members? Uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, you know, just a beautiful community. Uh, I, I look forward to someday visiting. If you can get me on Whistling Straits, I'll be there. Rick Minichello, you have a question. Yes, um, my question is to do with your rotary lights. Um, uh, when you put that on, is that just a free? Uh, um, free thing that everybody in the community gets to go to yeah it is it's uh it's free we ask that people donate a canned food item i should have shared that it goes to help feed the hungry here in our community uh so we we get large contributions of canned food items to help fill the food pantries here in lacrosse people can also uh donate cash but if they're not able to donate, they're absolutely welcome to be a part of the Rotary Lights. And that's something that has spanned out to many other communities uh, around La Crosse, around the Midwest, um, and really around the country here. So that's something that we've helped uh, other communities uh, be inspired. And um, our only ask is, if we help them with logistics and help like that as it, as it goes back to help feed the hungry in their communities. So um, it's a wonderful project here in La Crosse. Yeah, it looks, looks amazing. Good work, guys. Yeah. Any, anyone else have any questions uh, before we... Uh, and I'll just let you know that this meeting room will stay open for uh, the next half hour for anyone that uh, has time that wants to stay and chat. Um, we don't have any side rooms. Uh, it's a bit of a free for all, but um, we will do that. I appreciate that, Andy. Um, just going around, any other questions? Let me just look, to, Gary Fuhr. Yes, I just got one comment. I follow CNN News a lot and I noticed on there just which currently there's a little girl, a three-year-old girl skiing, which is on CNN News, and she's from Fernie, BC, which is just two-hour drive down the road from here. And I thought it was kind of interesting where that little girl was from. So if you take a look at it, and it's it's quite interesting because she's going down the ski hill and she's mic'd up by her parents. So any other questions? Or comments. First of all, Andy, Mark, and to your entire club, uh, congratulations. Um, what, a, what a wonderful organization that you have. And uh, the presentation today uh, gave us um, a look at La Crosse. Was, I you know, never even knew where La Crosse, Wisconsin, until I saw five questions with Andy. Now I know it's in between Minneapolis and Chicago. And it's not very far from Milwaukee, where best baseball team in history came from the Braves. Um, I'm sorry, a little, a little bit of yes. sports trivia here. Um, and uh, so thank you very much. We look forward to showcasing the beautiful Creston Valley next week uh, or next Tuesday, Thursday. Jeez, Andy, I'm, I've been up early uh, and had too much coffee. On Thursday, we look forward to sharing with you this beautiful Creston Valley and our Rotary Club who have 30 active members. And Jen Bergman is our secretary and is the one lady that is in our club. Patricia, I did not mean to be rude. Um, uh, we're, we're proud of who we are and what we do. And we're really looking forward to showing that off next week. Uh, normally at this time, I ask Jen, uh, our secretary of the club to announce birthdays and anniversaries. And uh, she advises there are none today. The other thing we do at this time, we usually do Happy Bucks and Connections, but we're running out of time on that. It's just Happy Bucks for me is just again to see Dean and to see all of these uh, back with us and to see all of these uh, guests with us today. Upcoming dates on Thursday. See, it's right here on my notes, Andy. Uh, on Thursday, we have a road trip to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, the Zoom invitation for 10 o'clock our time, 
will arrive to you, mem our current members here will arrive either late tonight or tomorrow. Um, thank you for Jamie for putting together that great graphic. Um, a couple of mugs of presidents and, and uh, a little tease that what's going on. Um, next week, our program will be presented by Aaron and Jason, two of our new members, newest, newer members, and they're going to present Social Media 101. Uh, when you look at the roster, we need Social Media 101, and Aaron and Jason are going to do that. In addition, our two newest members, Dennis and Lalit, will be formally inducted into our club that day. So with that, uh, it brings to our hour. We have met our time limits. Uh, anything else at this point for the good of Rotary? You know, and I thought this was going to be a real painful experience, but it's been a pleasure to, to run this through. Uh, I love the fact that Sarah had a glitch because I did too. I love the fact that the Dutch national anthem didn't come on when I missed it and we only got a commercial and it wasn't even uh, a bad one. Um, Zoom, you know, uh, as I said, the Rotary International President said Rotary uh, creates opportunities, you know, COVID has created opportunities. It's given us this opportunity to meet together. Um, we're looking forward to Thursday. So thank you all for being here with Rotary today. And uh, we will see you all on Thursday. And I'm hoping to bring a great group of Rotarians from the Creston Valley to that beautiful uh, riverfront town of La Crosse, Wisconsin and your Rotary Club. Thank you for being here today. I'm not gonna end this. I'm just gonna stop my recording now and the rest will be wide open.